Hey friends, welcome to my channel, Let's Get Crafting. These are the cute DIYs that we're gonna be doing today, super whimsical and fun. Our supplies, we're gonna need this keychain holder from the Dollar Tree, and these three little wooden shaped houses that they have in their new craft section at all the Dollar Trees. These are gonna be transformed into something super cute and whimsical. We're gonna start by cutting off these little corner pieces. We don't want those, so you're just gonna go ahead and cut those off so that these can flush up next to each other. And then we're going to also need three painter sticks cut down to size and I just sanded down the corners They looked a little bit rougher and rounded at the very tops because they're going to become the doors on these cute little beach huts that we're going to be making today. So we're going to make one of the houses a mustard yellow color and then the other two are going to be white because we're going to do something special with those and change them up so they all have their own little personality and we're turning this into a really cute whimsical keychain holder so that way when it's summertime you can put this up wherever you would normally hang up your keys. I just think that this is such a fun DIY and it's so colorful and bright. You can use it for other things too in your home. You don't have to only just put keys on it, but I just thought this was so cute to put by a front door for summertime. So our three little painter sticks, we're gonna paint them a gray, a pink color, and then a pretty aqua, kind of a light teal color. We'll just go with aqua, we'll say aqua. And then once you've got all three of those painted, you can move on to the next part, which is gonna be decorating the huts. Before I do that, I wanted to say who my DIY daily summer feature channel is. It is Anna Lee over at Anna Lee Ashby. Friends, if you don't know who Anna Lee is, she is, she, she is sunshine. She is the funniest, just upbeat, most spiritually kind person that you could find here on YouTube. She is so funny when you listen to her DIYs. She's totally real that when she makes a mistake, she just calls herself out on it. And the things she makes are so beautiful and high end. And she makes you feel that you can try any DIY. Go and check her out. She's a newer channel. You will love her and her family is so adorable. Go let her know that I sent you and give her some love and subscribe to her channel. You will not regret it. Now we're going to take some painter's tape and we are gonna tape off some lines because this particular beach hut is going to have stripes on it so it looks very cabana beach look. I think that is just the cutest look. And we're gonna use that same aqua color. This one's just a little bit lighter than the door is going to be and so we're just going to take our time making sure when we paint I always like to paint away from the painters tape so it doesn't bleed underneath to get that first coat on and then we do want it to look a little bit streaky because we want it to look almost like a watercolor look so don't try to make it too perfect with a solid color at least that's what I did I wanted it to look a little streaky then that way it looks more like I said watercolor and then I'm taking that lighter color and I'm just adding in a couple lighter colors onto the doors to give it that weathered beach look. I just think that this looks so pretty when you add that extra dry brush technique to the darker color. Now we're gonna take six tongue depressor sticks and we're gonna add some paint on both sides of them because these are gonna become the roof line once we sandwich all of the houses together. We want them to be popping out more 3D on it because then it makes it look more whimsical and just really interesting to the eye when someone sees it. So here I am, I'm painting two of them the aqua color, two of them white, and then the last two are gonna be a really light gray color that I'm just mixing together with the paints that I have over on my plate. And once I've got those covered front and back, then we can move on to even more fun things. I really felt like this whole DIY was just so fun putting it together and I hope you will all try it if you have these supplies or can find them because it's just, like I said, sometimes it's just fun to do little colorful projects that just bring us joy and sunshine during this time right now where we're all trying to be safe and healthy. So on the third little cabana hut I'm gonna add on a little banner at the top so first I did a line in gray and then I did all kinds of different color triangles that matched the colors I'm going with and then I'm going back over with a little bit of black and I'm just creating a tiny little line at the top and then on my doors for my little huts I'm gonna paint some numbers on two of them I decided to go with 5 and 13 because 
I don't know, I just did. <laughs> you can pick whatever numbers you want that are significant to you. And then on the pink door, I went ahead and added a star. And I did that simply by just taking a pencil and did a star by connecting the lines, all the points that we learn how to do when we're kids. That's how I always get a good star shape because I am terrible at trying to freehand an actual star shape. I, that is one thing I have never been able to do. And then I'm just going to fill it in with white paint and you would never know that you did the star that way. Now we're going to go ahead and start gluing on our little huts. At this point, I was so giddy over this project. I just thought it was so fun putting this one together, like I've already said three or four times in this in this particular video clip. Then I'm gonna flip it over on the back side to really make sure it's nice and stable and not have any issues. I'm stapling it down, and I would recommend at this point taking it outside and spray painting the whole thing on the back white so it looks all cohesive and clean, so that way it looks like a nice finished product. And then once I flipped it back over, now we can start adding on all of the 3D elements to the project. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the houses and I'm just gonna simply cut them down to the size that I need them to and you want them to all butt up to each other nicely. So you can see here that I'm doing the roof line on the inside of the mustard hut first because I wanna make sure that it's not gonna cause an issue with the one on the outside of it. So that way everything fits again, like I said, nice and snug. So now here I am, I'm doing the teal on the inside of the one that has the banner, and then I will come around on the outside and do that one next. And then at that point, I will move on to doing the roof line on the middle one because at this point we've already measured out the ones on the sides and they fit perfectly and then this last one we're going to be able to just snug that right in there then to secure it to make sure this doesn't fall apart on you i'm going around on the back side and i'm adding in hot glue just to make sure it's really strong not on the front side because we want to keep it clean looking but on the back side to really seal the deal and get them on there strong i also then added on the houses and now here comes an even cuter part. We're gonna take some of the shish kebab sticks that we have from all of our barbecuing right now and we are going to just make three little top flag poles. This is the easiest thing ever. You're just gonna go ahead and add some glue, make sure it's a nice dollop at the top that it's sitting in nice and strong. And then we're gonna take some fabric and it's really easy to make a banner. You just take some fabric, fold it in half and I'm gonna use this as a template so you can see that I did the first one so they're all the same size. You're gonna fold it in half right at that crease line and you're gonna cut your triangle, avoiding cutting down the center of that fold because you want that to fold right over the flagpole. So here I am, I'm adding hot glue, I'm just folding it right over and pinching it down into place. And then once you've got all of your flagpoles on there, you can add on an extra hook on the back if you want it to be stronger. I will say just one hook being on the back will want it to just kind of tip. But however you want to hang it up, it's so cute. I hope you enjoyed this DIY. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Heidi Sambel and this is my Heidi Sambel DIY channel. Here on this channel, all throughout the month of June and July, I am posting a brand new video Monday through Friday and sometimes on Saturdays if I'm running behind on a couple of things, but all throughout the week, you are going to be guaranteed five new videos. So make sure you click the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up this video because it helps out my channel. And if you didn't know, I also have another channel called Heidi Sambel Home. Over there, I show a lot of home renovation projects, cleaning motivation, and I also show where I put all of my DIYs. Our project that we are gonna be working on next is this <laughs> super cute seagull DIY. Friends, I really wanted to get in a seagull because seagulls were all over the place where I grew up and I'm going to tell you all a really funny story in just a second while we're making these but to get started we're going to take three foam squares from the Dollar Tree and we're going to do the baby bird first. We're going to take our craft knife and in a little bit you're going to see I'm going to switch over to an actual kitchen knife 
but I'm gonna create a slope down the back side of that shape because we're creating the top of his head and then the tail down at his body. So you can see here that I've just sloped it down and now I've moved over to my kitchen knife and you can see that I'm shaving out almost like a mountain you want the top peak and then you want to keep shaving away at the front side of the body so that way you're rounding it out and then when I get down to the bottom I'm just rounding and rounding and rounding and then I come around to the back and I'm rounding off the back and the little booty of the bird and I'm just creating this cute almost like a banana shape but you know, a bird's body. So here I am, I'm shaving off around the bottom because I really wanted the bottom to be emphasized that it was round and just like a chubby little bird. <laughs> the whole time I was making this, Miriam would not leave me alone. She was by my side the entire time asking me how I was making the bird and she was so excited that I'm making a mama bird and a baby bird and so here you can see that it's all rounded at the bottom and the very 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 bottom is absolutely flat where the bird can be able to be stood up and put on a shelf somewhere. So now we're going to move on to the mama bird. We are going to take two pieces. I'm going to put them just like this where they're off each other a little bit because we want to be able to create the exact same shape and this is going to allow us to be able to make the head and then the chubby body at the bottom and we're going to go through the exact same steps now a funny thing <laughs> i wanted to share about seagulls i just thought this would be fun while i'm showing you all these steps when I was a teenager and we used to go to the beach all the time, I had a brother who really, really, really wanted to be buried in the sand and would not leave everybody alone until we finally did it. And so we were like, fine, we'll bury you in the sand. Well, another sister, while my brother had the towel over his head and he was being buried in the sand, my sister took popcorn that we had <laughs> and she dumped it all over, because we had finished burying him in the sand, she had dumped it all over him, and a huge herd, we had no idea how many seagulls were gonna come, but a huge herd of seagulls came and started pecking all the popcorn, and he eventually figured out that there were seagulls all over him, and it was the funniest thing, and we had to eventually shoo them all away, because there were like 100 seagulls on him. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite beach memories. Okay, now at this point, we're going to go ahead and cover our seagull. We're going to take a long rectangle piece and we are going to put the bird right in the middle and cut slits up the center point of it, just like you see here. Now I'm wrapping around the front of the bird's body first and I'm cutting away that fabric and gluing it into place. And then we're going to bring that piece down around the front of him and we're going to pull it as tight as we can. You want to pull this really, really, really tight because the tighter and smoother it is, the more it looks like you've actually sewn this little bird and it's a cute little stuffed animal bird, but we're using super, super cheap products that are really affordable and cost efficient and it's way faster than having to pull out a sewing machine and stuff the bird and all the cuts and measurements. This is so quick. This whole thing, each bird probably took me maybe about eight minutes to make. They were so fast to make. I wouldn't even say 10 minutes. But if you're new at crafting and you wanna try this, just know that it might take maybe a little bit longer, maybe about 30 minutes if you're taking your time with it. So you can see that I brought it really tight around the front. I folded down the sides where we created those slits and then glued them around his back. And now at the bottom, I'm just pulling everything as tight as I possibly can. I'm using a felt fabric and that's gonna allow you to really stretch it and mold it. And then as I'm getting extra fabric, I'm cutting it away and I just keep pulling it as tight as I can, pulling it, pulling it, add more hot glue, cut off any extra flaps. And then at the bottom, it should be nice and flat and snug and your whole bird body is nice and smooth. Now comes the cutest part of these birds. We're gonna add on twine legs because why not they should have long little skinny legs so we're going to take two pieces of twine that are the same length we're going to add some hot glue and then we're going to put him right on another piece of felt and sketch around the body of him so that we have the right size and glue that right at the bottom so it hides his legs and it's nice and clean and finished. So if someone picks it up and looks at it, they'll think that you bought it from the store. And then now we're gonna tie two knots, one at his knee and then one down by his ankle. 
so that these can dangle over a shelf. Are you dying of laughter? Are these birds not the cutest thing ever? <laughs> like I'm, I'm laughing so hard as I'm making these. And just wait, you're gonna see Miriam's hand come in and out a ton because when she realized I was getting close to it, she comes back and just will not leave. And she was just so excited to see them. So now for the feet, I'm taking two pieces. You saw that I doubled it up and I just cut that, that shape that I needed. And it's almost like a little shovel or the shape of a bird's foot, like you can see here. And I'm just sandwiching that on so that cute gingham yellow fabric is there. And now I'm doubling it up to make him some wings. Well, I'll say her, because Miriam has dubbed that this is the mama bird and the baby bird. And we're only gonna glue down the front part of the wing and then the middle part and leave the back of the wing flapped out so it looks like it's fluttering its little wing. And then for the beak, I'm just gonna take a long, almost like a rectangle shape, or with a little bit of a triangle point. And then I just wrapped it in some fabric, added in a shish kebab stick. I'm adding on some yellow paint and some orange paint to give it some depth and some texture because this is really probably the most colorful thing on it. And I really felt like this needed to really have some personality. And then I'm just gonna take that little beak that we've just created. I'm gonna cut a hole into the bird's body and then I'm just going to glue it right into place. Now at this point, our little bird is looking so adorable. I want to make 50 of these. That would be really weird if I had 50 of these on a shelf in my house, but I would love it. I would never be in a bad mood being around these. And then I'm now gonna just take some buttons and simply add on some buttons right at the eye. Make sure you give a nice dollop of glue. Don't burn yourself. Take your time with this part. And here's Miriam. She kept saying, cheep, 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 <laughs> cheep, cheep, cheep. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of my whimsical DIYs today for the coastal summer theme here on my channel. Couldn't you see these in a child's room on a shelf if you have that beachy theme? It could be so cute. Now don't forget, go visit Anna Lee. I promise you, you will think she is so fun. Every time I watch her videos, I truly just laugh because she's so funny to listen to. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you try these DIYs, don't forget to tag me over on Instagram so I can see them. I love seeing your projects and what you're doing in your craft rooms. And until the next episode, bye friends. Thank you.